drivers from all over the globe converge on the most beautiful city in the world, Sydney, Australia. September 2001 for the 13th IFMA 1.8 scale IC Circuit World Championship. Hundred and thirty competitors from nineteen countries paraded during the opening ceremony at the World Class Race Complex, maintained and operated by the New South Wales Radio Control Racing Car Club at Moorbank, Sydney. The IFMA World Championships are held biannually. The first World Championship event was held in Pomona, California, with Butch Krolls taking the honours in 1977. 1979 saw Phil Booth of the United Kingdom win in Geneva, Switzerland. Arturo Carbonell of the USA has won in 1981 at Indianapolis. In 1983, the venue moves to Canoe, France, and Frenchman David Lacat took the honors. Rodi Rome from France, who competes at this event, won in 1985, Tokyo, Japan. Repeat Fusco won the title in his hometown of Pomona, California in 1987. The next decade was dominated by Lamberto Calari representing Italy, who won all five events. Lamberto Calari is present today. Adrian Bertan, the winner in Clermont-Ferrand in 1999, is also present at this 2001 event here in beautiful Australia. During qualifying, each driver gets six rounds of ten minutes each. Their single best run will determine their starting position in the Christmas tree final system. This track is unique in that a successful combination of power, efficiency and skill is required to achieve the right result. Too much of either can result in disaster. Weighing in at 2,500 grams, these cars are powered by 3.5cc high-performance two-stroke engines, achieving over three horsepower at rev ranges over 40,000 RPM. Power is delivered to the ground by a four-wheel drive Kevlar belt system coupled with an automatic two-speed gearbox. These cars accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in less than 1.9 seconds, with terminal speeds upwards of 120 kilometers per hour. These cars are the elite in the world of radio control car racing. The overall package of the car is greatly determined by the aerodynamics of the Can-Am body. These bodies are designed to generate sufficient downforce to keep these cars glued to the track on the high speed twist and turns. The grip is just awesome. Cars are released from a staggered start. Your clock starts when you cross the line. Fuel stops, crucial. Osaka on his fastest run yet. This is round four. As he comes through the keyhole, crosses the line. Random fuel testing throughout the event by our chief scrutineer. Our youngest driver ever. 
and Australia's Rick Bartolo. Mark Green from England. And Daniela Ialasi watching. Kenji Osaka is underweight in round four and loses his top qualifier run. On to round five, the second last run for each of these drivers. Osaka and Ialasi putting in blinding laps. And by the computer, Daniel Ialasi is putting in his fastest run yet. And Jerry Cyril calls in Josh Cyril for fuel. Can he make it? Seconds are everything. Josh runs out of fuel on the back straight. Ralph Birch, representing the United States, describes to his longtime pit man an incident that cost him his second last run. What happened? Something with the motor. Mate is gone? We don't really know. Just not making enough power and it was a little weak, but it ain't good enough. Not the chance. It's now the end of round five and Daniela Ialasi, representing Italy, is the fastest man in the target for everybody. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kenji Osaka and Team Mugen watch closely as the competition gets faster and faster. been your best run so far? The last one. I made a mistake but I'm still third so I hope uh, it will stay that way at least. I will try to to improve but it will be not so easy. The track is warmer and we will see. Definitely the competition certainly picked up in that last round didn't it? Oh yeah I mean Osaka is now only fourth and he was on the TQ spot all the time so very very difficult, very close. It's very unusual to see so many Japanese at the top of the echelon too. Yeah, that's true. I think there are two reasons they improved in driving anyway. But the track is like their tracks is. Very much traction and very tight. And the European tracks are much faster and different kind of traction. Thanks for your time. Hope you do well. Thank you. Then just as the fastest half of the field were about to go out for their final qualifying, the unthinkable happened. Rain.
are we doing, John? Racing on? Uh, I don't think so. Too west. Too west now. Mr. Spashit, Mr. Spashit, what do you think of the track? What do you think of the track? It's a bit wet at the moment. Right? It's a bit wet. It's a bit wet. There's a lot of lot of puddles. A lot of puddles. <laughs> The top 10 qualifiers will now compete over one gruelling hour to determine who will be the new 1-8 scale circuit world champion, the most prestigious of all titles. Cars are off with a perfect start from all 10 starters. Daniel Ialasi, representing Italy, takes the lead on the first lap. Second lap nerves. Fakuda tries to take the inside on Salvin, and both pay the price. At lap four, Daniel Ialasi from Italy continues to lead the race. Close behind him is current world champion Adrian Bertin from France. In third place, Lamberto Calari. Let's have a look at that again. Oh, that was close. Fantini and Coma nearly coming together. And here they are, first and second place, Adrian Bertin and Daniel Ialasi. And Bertin from France takes the lead from Ialasi from Italy. The current world champion, Adrian Bertin, is now in the lead. Excuse me, Mr. Kalari, as Osaka goes through to take third spot. What a piece of driving. Kalari off. Coming up through the middle of the 
mechanics prepare for the first fuel stop. And in comes the race leader, Adrian Bertin, for his first fuel stop. Followed by almost every other car. The Pete Lane referees keeping a very close eye on legal refueling. They're going into the sweeper at the end of the straight at over 120 kilometers per hour. Multiply that by the scale size and you get nearly 1,000 kilometers per hour. With statistics like that, that makes full-size car racing look tame.
Earlier this week, we asked Adrian Bertan, is his car performing as he would have expected from his practice in April? Mm, not really, not really, because uh, the lap time I'm much more faster and condition different from us, uh, from April. April was good uh, training session to learn the track and not to lose time from the start of uh, the World Championship, but uh, yeah, his conditions are different and I don't, uh, for the moment, uh, get a good setup to be able to first to, to make the best lap time and then uh, try to beat only one time. So okay. I have two problems for me. Uh, now, uh, after watching the chip, I change uh, the car and work now for Kyosho to, to develop uh, something uh, new, but there is no pressure special. The only pressure is to try to, be, to do my best and uh, for the moment. The Kyosho car looks fantastic. You guys are a very professional team. It's great to have you back. I wish you the best of luck.
Pit crews and mechanics. 50% of a successful combination. They can be fathers, brothers or sisters, mates, hired guns, or wives. The perfect fuel stop from some. Some, not so good. A big strong arm comes in handy. Communication with your driver and mechanic. Some do it this way. like this. Meanwhile, the professional mechanics in the team shed prepare their driver's car with meticulous cleanliness and accuracy. Mario Rossi putting his magic touch on those factory engines. Now let's put them back on the track and see if all that work makes any difference. And Daniel Ialasi talking to his father and longtime mechanic about the handling characteristics and issues with his car. Through this communication, they'll be able to develop a setup that will give him the winning formula. It was a little bit rough. <laughs> Experience from long-time veteran okay. is passed down to the lower rank. Uh, now it's warmer, so it will be more stable. I think you will not make a good lap time. Yes, I'm not winning on the engine, I'm just asking you about the oh, ratio. I think, I think this is the, the ratio is happen because uh, now if the engine one works fine before, there is no reason why it should not. Yeah. You know, it, it's the same engine, so it should work also the same the way. Weather. Only the weather has become more warm, so your engine has less power. Rody Rome, former world champion, 1985. Rody Rome, one of the longest standing names in the world championship circuit, competitor in nine world championships, the winner of 1985, with numerous credits to your name. I was at the race in 85 when you won. We all sort of look back, it's a long time ago, but how different is racing at the world now back? Compared uh, to 85? Yeah. Oh, a lot of things have changed. Uh, at that time, the, the, the technology was less high. Uh, we could build the, the car and just, you know, uh, work a little on it. And now you have to do a lot more maintenance. Uh, everything has become more precise. Uh, the engine has become much more powerful. Uh, also, the, the, the driver level has increased very much uh, because uh, all the drivers are now very, very close. Now you just have to, before you could, you know, as we say, uh, have the engine stop and still win your qualification and get a good time out of it. But now, uh, if your engine stops, sure. you just sure. stop. <laughs> I mean, it stops. Sure. So there is no, I mean, everything has become much more perfect and no mistake, every mistake is being paid off, it is being taken off. So everything has to be more precise. Now, you are the R in RV Concept Engines, which is a highly competitive uh, product that is designed by yourself, marketed worldwide. Uh, we've had great success here in, in Australia with it. Uh, how are the performance of your engines in comparison to the others here at this meeting? I think the performance of our engines are not really much more better than, for example, the engines which are being sold. The only difference is, is because uh, everything is being fine-tuned, you get more out of it. And also, uh, everything has to be neat and clean, so we get more power out of it. Also, the temperature helps, because we are a little bit higher temperature, so automatically the engine makes better performance. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Australia. Thank you very much.
Earlier in the week, we had a chance to talk to America's Josh Cyril. Rockin' Josh Cyril. Your name given to you by Australians who met you back in April uh, when you were out here testing the new Phantom. What, what differences do you see from April to now? Um, not too much. I mean, it's pretty much the same track. I mean, obviously, World Championship level, everybody's definitely going a bit quicker. Other than that, the only thing that's kind of throwing me for a loop is having the rain off and on, you know, get two or three days sure. of good running, okay, get the car figured back out and some rain and start back over, you know, so that's the only thing that I'm struggling with a bit now. But, um, now, how, how would you rate Australia as a track or as a facility? Oh, incredible. Yeah. That's really good. So, I mean, like, so many other World Championship tracks I raced on, they've been pure, you know, pure horsepower. This, you actually have with the layout and the traction and just everything about it. You have to, for one, drive the car. You have to be extremely smooth to be able to save fuel just to run the five minutes, you know, uh, for one pit stop only for, for qualification. You know, just things like that to where it's not, you know, it's not just whoever's got the best engine wins, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely tough. Well, we know you have what it takes. Uh, we know you will be in contention. We wish you the best of luck uh, in your quest to be the new If My World Champion for one answer. Good luck. You're going to need a lot of it. <laughs>
In the week leading up to official qualifying, there was open practice. The trick was, though, to get onto the track. The Sly Fox race management system was working overtime to accommodate everybody. The computer even recorded 28 cars at one stage. Sometimes, it was tight. And there was some coming together. Ooh. One of the time drivers. Everybody was in a hurry. There were crashes. More crashes. And yet again, more crashes. But that's all part of open practice. That's my corner. Excuse me. As the week progressed, the cars got faster. And the looks got more serious. Little adjustments made all the difference. Well, maybe I should put it in upside down. If it's gonna give me more power. Maybe we should just have a meeting about it. Yes, sir. What does this do? Maybe if I tickle it, it's gonna go faster. Does this go on the front or the back? Where's that candy? I feel like I'm at Disneyland. You know who you are. Tires. 
everybody toes the line. Good morning, Mr. Burton. Maybe a bite to eat. And Osaka traction rolls.
mechanics, you are reminded, leave your cars. Scrutineering will pick the cars up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this, we will have a presentation. So please hang around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also from Japan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carla McQueen, third place. Oh,